Hai, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Alright, okay, thank you very much, uh, Sheila. So, I think we will start in a, in a while, but uh, just a little, a little <laughs> I have a meeting at 3.30. Okay. Uh, so, I will join you all the way until 3.30, and then uh, at 3.30, I will leave for a while. And we're supposed to finish at 4.30. Okay, so, uh, inshallah, I will try to get back before 4.30 lah for the closing. And if I'm mistaken, uh, Madam Malati is here. Hi, hi, Madam. How are you? Hi, hi, uh, Doctor. Hi, Madam How Malati. Are you? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, okay, let me remove my uh, mask first. Okay. Sorry, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, okay I'll be here uh, for a while only. Uh, because uh, I need to settle a lot of things. Tomorrow I'm starting my holiday, <laughs> a long oh. holiday. Yeah, you're probably coming out, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Madam Sheila, how are you? Hi, Madam Malati, I'm fine. How are you? Thank you, thank you. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, so I hope that there will be more coming in soon. Uh, yeah, I already uh, shared again this morning. Uh, yeah. the you know poster so I think many will join yeah. hopefully <laughs> for it, for it. I, I think some of them are in the YouTube right quite a number of them in YouTube because okay. they said uh, cannot access to Zoom it's difficult for them to access to Zoom oh okay yeah I think the technical team will, will have a way to sort things yeah. out then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the, the IT will uh, take a look at Akil. Minta tolong tengok ya Akil eh. Pasal uh, Zoom ni. Uh, kalau ada yang tak boleh nak masuk lagi. But uh, so far just now, I think, I think okay je. Tak ada masalah. We are waiting for more people to to join us. Yeah, I uh, think... Yes, I think I can see a, a number of, uh, you know, uh, viewers in our YouTube as well yeah. and uh, like macam minggu lepas lah Sheila eh? so I will monitor the the YouTube so student who are joining us using YouTube you can uh, ask question in the chat box okay and uh, I will tell I will let uh, Madam Sheila know any question that you have and like I mentioned earlier on so uh, those who, of you who just joined us and you do not have the material for the session today okay you can get it uh with from the link for those of you in zoom you have you can get the link from the chat box okay and then those of you who are uh, watching and following us from youtube you can see the the link in the chat as well as uh, the chat has been pinned as well actually in the uh, in youtube okay, let me see if they we have it uh yeah Okay, so we is in the chat box as well in the uh, YouTube as well. I would um, I would uh, I would pin the, the 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 link from time to time as well. Yes, Madam Malati, you have something to say? Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Hairil and uh, Madam Sheila. Okay. Uh, I think before we start, I would like to. Uh, thank Madam Sheila, okay, for uh, for sharing uh, expertise and uh, also experience. And I think these two days uh, workshop uh, last week and this week, uh, very fruitful and uh, constructive. Thank you, Madam. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. My pleasure. And, yeah, and not forgetting uh, Doctor Doctor Hairil uh, as as Razali and his team, UIA team for organizing this uh, knowledge sharing workshop with our students. Thank you so much, doctor. So I hope in future we can have uh, more workshops or more program like this. Okay, doctor, thanks a lot. Okay, <laughs> I think I, I, I thought of giving this uh, short speech last week, but uh, I was not able to, you know, um, join the Zoom. So that's why I joined a bit late. Uh, so thanks a lot, uh, both of you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having us too. <laughs> okay, Madam, most welcome.
Yes, thank you very much, uh, Madam Malati and uh, PPD Moa as well, actually, you know, because um, on our part at the university is that like, we want to try, you know, because we are in Pago and, you know, we would like to, uh, you know, to participate and to help out the local community in Pago as well in Sinmoa. And thank you very much for actually having us and to agree to, you know, to uh, to have us on the programs and I know all the competitions that we have. At the end of the day, like I always mentioned to um, to some of my colleagues, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we are here to help out. Uh, you know, uh, if you if you allow us to come, and inshallah, we 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 will be able to actually to help out. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Anytime, okay. doctor. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think um perhaps me uh it's already uh five minutes after uh you know uh I think uh maybe we can start uh you know now uh because I think more and more people will come in. Okay. Um to everyone uh, who just joined us, assalamualaikum and very good afternoon. My name is Kairul from the Kulia of Languages and Management, uh University of Islam Antarabangsa Malaysia, uh, Campus Pago. And today we have with us uh, Madam Sheila Aglasima from uh, from SK Puchong Perdana, right? SMK Puchong Perdana, yes. Yes, SMK Puchong Perdana. Okay, so uh, we will be looking at uh, listening as well as speaking paper today for SPM, paper three and paper four. All right, so... Um, so those of you who join us uh, using Zoom, you and you don't have the material yet. Kalau tak ada lagi bahan, bahan tu a uh, link to the bahan. I dah letakkan dalam chat box. You can uh, you can download the 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 apa the document from the from the link. As well as those of you who join us using uh, YouTube, okay, it is as well. We put it. We have pinned it in the chat box in the in the in uh in youtube as well okay so without further ado uh madam sheila the screen is yours thank you all right thank you so much dr khaira thank you so much uh madam malati for having me today assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone so this is my second and the uh, perhaps the last workshop for, for this series. So for those of you who joined uh, me last week, you're seeing me again for this week. And for this week, uh, last week we did writing. And for this week, we will be doing uh, speaking and listening, listening and speaking, All right? So I will start with listening, even though this is the fourth paper for the whole English paper. Okay, and uh, I hope to have um, enough time to share my materials with you and if you have any problems or if you have any queries you can just um, you know forward your questions uh, type your questions in the chat box and I'll try to you know look at it and we try to discuss uh, discuss over it okay so yeah uh, let's start with listening okay let's start with listening so as for listening, uh, as we progress, I will have activities that requires uh, you to have really good, um, how, how do I say, how to put this, uh, to make sure that you have to make sure that your speaker is working because there will be activities that you need to listen. Okay, so that, that is why we listen. Okay, right. So as you can see here, let's start right now because like okay for the first part i will be talking about listening and then the next hour we will be doing speaking okay right let's see here okay so this is the fourth paper and in your fourth uh, paper for listening you will have four parts okay you will have four parts in your uh, listening test the first one is the short monologue the second one is longer narrative the third one is short monologue again and then the fourth one is the informational dialogue and blah 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 okay blah 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 <laughs> sorry uh i guess your teacher may have uh will go through like each component with you however what I will try to do with you today is I want I would want to share some tips and get you the feel of you know 
how you should be listening, okay? How you should be listening. If you're able to listen, all these four tasks will be easier, okay? Right, so you just need to know how to. So for each part of this, the total marks for the paper is 30, 30 marks, okay? So whatever score that you get, uh, divided by 30 it times by 25%. So for each paper, like I mentioned last week, uh, it carries 25, it carries 25%. Okay, so for this part, it carries also 25%. Right. As for today, what we will be doing. Okay, so let's see what is listening, tips to listen, and also we will be doing some activities, listening activities here. Okay, so first and foremost, let's see, what is listening? Any ideas? What is listening? Is it listen, listen? Okay, you just listen to what people are talking and that's it. Do you think the process just stopped there? No, right? There are more to it, okay? So listening, as you can see here, is defined as the act of hearing what others are saying. Process and understand. Process and understand the message that is conveyed. So when you listen to something, you, do, you don't just listen, listen, okay? If your mom tries to tell you to do something at home, like, Sheila, uh, uh, can you just help me to... Uh, you know, uh, take the laundry, okay? Can you do the dishes, okay? Can you do this, this, this? Even as simple as your mom telling you what to do at home, you need to understand what the person is trying to say, okay? So, kita dengar. Lepas tu, kita kena proses apa benda yang that person is trying to say to us, okay? So, that is why process and understand if you don't understand you will not respond okay you will not respond if your mom tells you to do the dishes basuh pinggan lepas makan so you basuh pinggan lepas makan okay ah contoh so you listen for ideas what do you listen for usually you listen for ideas you listen for the sound and you listen uh, what language it is uh, the message is being conveyed if it is in english if you understand english then you will understand what is going on if if it is other than languages that you don't understand for example like mm, how do i say for example russian french spanish okay so if the message is being conveyed in a different language that you don't understand, so you will not be able to process. Okay, tak faham. Bila tak faham, kita tak tahu macam mana nak, nak respond. Alright, okay, so yeah, tips to listen. How do you listen actually, okay? How to listen better? As you can see in this diagram, okay, as you can see in this diagram, 30% of, uh, of the input comes from input. That is output. <laughs> that is output. Talking, okay? You receive input by talking, you receive input, the least input from writing, and you, you get the most input from listening, okay? So, listening is part of language learning. Kalau kita nak belajar sesuatu bahasa, kita kena mendengar, okay? Kita kena mendengar. Just, I give you an example. Kalau kita tengok cerita Korea pun, you know, K-drama, I'm sure like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm a diehard fan of K drama, but I think some of you, uh, some of you are a big fan of K drama. I do watch K drama like occasionally, but you know when I watch K drama, of course, kalau boleh, we prefer to listen to the drama in Korean. Okay, kalau katalah cerita tu dah macam dah dub in bahasa, or dub in English, or dub in other languages other than Korean, dia rasa macam pelik sikit. Okay, and for those who are very interested in K-drama, who really likes K-drama, they will really listen to, to how these actors speak uh, to how these actors pronounce the words and then they learn, okay? Uh, one of the examples that I can give you, very, how is it, very, the easiest example, Saranghe, 
everybody knows what saranghe means. Okay, even though maybe uh, my pronunciation is not as accurate as the Korean, but you know, the sound of saranghe is like, you know what it means, right? Okay, so if you do not know, watch Korean dramas or, or, or you can just Google what saranghe means. Okay, so as you can see in this diagram, 45%, kalau kita nak belajar bahasa, sesuatu bahasa tu, we get it mostly from listening. Okay, we start from listening to the language. Other tips to improve your listening skills, as you can see there, there is a list of tips there. There, are, uh, uh, there is a list of tips there that you can do, okay, that you can do uh, to improve your listening skills okay listening skills not only in english but also in other languages that you wish to learn okay however for today we are focusing on english okay macam mana kita nak memperbaiki memperbaiki ya yeah, memperbaiki yeah. to listen better okay listen to something you enjoy okay if you want to be good in english of course you listen to english songs more english songs however you need to choose the right songs to listen to. You know that, you know, uh, a lot of songs nowadays, they are a little bit rubbish, you know, they are a little bit inappropriate with all those not so appropriate words there, okay? So you listen to English uh, music, you watch uh, English movies, okay? You watch English movies, listen for keywords. If you listen to something, Sometimes you don't actually listen and understand the full sentence. You actually listen to the important things, okay? Even if your mom tells you to do something also like, okay, can you help me do the dishes? Do the dishes, okay? Do the dishes. We understand as do the dishes. You don't hear, can you help me? Do the, you only hear, do the dishes. So you get it. Do the dishes, basu pinggan, okay? Accept the fact that you are not going to understand everything, obviously. That is very obvious. When you listen to someone talking, for example, right now, you are listening to what I'm saying over here. You may, may not understand what I'm trying to say, okay? But I would hope that you understand important those important things, words or keywords that is related to today's topic, okay? So that is why I guess the slides also help you to, you know, if you, um, if I speak too fast, uh, the slides will actually help you to catch up with what I have spoken, uh, okay? Keep cool when you do not understand, even if you continue to not understand for a long time, it is okay. That is why you need to practice. Okay, you need to practice whatever that you do, you need practice. Okay. Uh yeah. Do not translate in your in your na native language. Yes. I mean this is pretty hard to do. However, sometimes kita macam eh, dia cakap apa tu ah? Tak faham ah, dia cakap apa. The moment you rasa macam eh tak faham lah. Ah. Don't put a mental block there. Okay, macam, eh, tak faham lah. Dia cakap laju sangat lah, tak faham lah. So, the moment you say tak faham, tak faham, that's it. You are actually blocking yourself. Blocking yourself. Don't block yourself. Just just go go along. Go with the flow. Ha? Go with the flow. And maybe, you know, after five minutes of you listening or a few minutes uh, you listening to that person talking, mesti ada benda yang you can understand. Okay, listen for the gist of the conversation. So if let's say the person is talking for one minute, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, there must be something, one thing that you will understand. Okay, takkanlah tak faham langsung. Betul tak? Okay, right. Another tips, uh, other tips to improve is, you know, besides uh, what I've mentioned just now, you communicate with people. Communicate. Do you see communication? Let me try thing here. Ah, nampak tak communication? Ah, communication. Sometimes I do understand. Kadang-kadang macam kita nak speaking, kita nak practice speaking. We know that if we want to improve our speaking skills, we need to speak. Okay, kita kena bercakap dalam bahasa Inggeris. Kalau tak bercakap, you will never. Uh, you will never improve. 
right? Tapi dalam masa kita nak bercakap tu macam, okay, we need friends to talk to. Sometimes I think that it is unfortunate, okay? Tetapi malangnya, unfortunately, we don't, we may not have friends who would want to speak English with us. Okay, so kalau kita macam cuba nak speaking, ah masa tu lah, adalah suara-suara sumbang cakap apa, alam, kau ni poyo je belagak lah kau ni, you know that kind of thing. So I guess that kind of mentality should, you know, should stop. Sebab, yeah, kadang-kadang macam not everyone is as strong as other people. Sometimes macam kadang-kadang bila orang cakap macam tu, kita pun, Koyak juga, betul tak? Ha, we will be like, uh, aku nak ni lah, tapi macam I don't have friends. And then you get demotivated to learn, okay? Which is kind of like a setback for you to learn speak in English, right? Okay, so radio, we have the radio there. Okay, listen to English channel radio. Uh, I guess like uh, what is one of the popular radio station that you can listen to, like Hits FM, uh, because they play like latest music. Uh, mix FM, okay lah Mix FM dia macam retro retro sikit But still okay, you have Fly FM You know, listen more To English radio stations uh, Okay, you have Podcast there, special Educational sites, special educational Sites, maybe you can watch Documentary uh, I'm not a fan of documentary but You know, documentary To a certain extent do help Okay, audio books Films, okay, films or movies over here. Okay, my dear, films or movies, ah, uh, films or movies. Watch more English films, English movies. Uh, I know that you know. Again, um, choose the right movies to watch. Even if you come across inappropriate stuff, just ignore. But you know, focus on choosing the right genre of movies to watch so that you'll be able to learn, okay? And um, I remember that when I, back in, when I was a student, how my lecturer actually, she trained us to listen was that she would play the movie without subtitles, okay? Without subtitles, okay? Tengok movie, tak ada subtitle dekat bawah sebab sometimes there is pros and cons. Kadang-kadang ada baik dan buruknya ada sari kata dekat bawah tu kan. With subtitles, sometimes it's like it helps you to catch up the scenes that you may missed out. Okay? Macam eh kenapa tiba-tiba macam tu macam okay the moment you read the subtitles oh okay faham. Uh, if the movie is played without subtitles, you will focus more, okay? So that is the point of, you know, watching films without subtitles, okay? Kalau kita tak letak subtitles, even kalau guna Astro sekalipun, Astro ke Netflix ke, you can turn off the subtitles, okay? When you turn, on the, uh, turn off the subtitles, you will pay more attention to what is going on. Okay, and also when you watch English films, you learn how to pronounce words, phrases, how do people speak, and you know, um, minus the swearing and the inappropriate part again. Okay, uh, yeah, so there are things that you can learn uh, from watching in English films. Okay. Songs, okay, listening to English songs as well, it will, it will help. All right, so let me erase this. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Ta -da! Oops. Okay, next. Uh -oh, it is not moving. What is this not moving? Ta -da! Okay, hold on, yeah. Let me see. All righty. Okay, next up. So all in all, basically, what are you listening for? You are listening for main ideas. You listen for details. You listen for a sequence. If let's say someone is trying to is to tell you what to do, uh, how to do something, you listen. Okay. If the person gives you, 
if you are if you are asking for directions to go somewhere, you listen for the direction first. You turn right. You go straight. You come to the when you reach the traffic light. When you are at the traffic light, you turn right. You go straight again, and then turn left and whatnot. Okay, so listen for specific specific vocabulary. Listen for cultural interest. Listen for listening for attitudes and opinions. Listening for for language. Okay, you have over there ah functional language there. Okay, next up. Alrighty. Okay, you may have access to the worksheets. Okay, so this is the worksheet. Oops. Let me see here. And I think you can access to the worksheets in the link provided there for those who do not have it. Okay, and if you, if you get to print the worksheet out, that would be great. It would be easier. Okay, it would be much more easier for you to, to, to do the activities, right? So as you can see here, how many components are there in the CFR SPM learning test? Okay, so how many parts? Okay, I did mention just now. Okay, what are some ways that you think you can do to improve your listening skills? List down three ways. So I guess this question is very reflective. So nanti bila dah habis bengkel, boleh tengok balik, duduk, fikir. What do you think you can do for you to improve your listening skills? All right, okay, so let's dive into the first part okay so the first part here is dictation i know that uh dictation is not part of your english uh the test uh the part, english component the listening test okay however this is i think a good practice for you to listen and write okay because as you move along you will see that um especially with the fourth part okay the fourth part of your listening test you need to be able to listen and also to write down that particular and specific word for the blank okay and for that also we will have uh, an exercise for it later on okay so the first part is dictation All right so you can write down in the boxes here there are five columns and one two three four five six seven eight 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 five columns and eight rows so pretty much about like 40 words okay pretty much about 40 words so what i will do for this one is i will read the short a very short um uh paragraph short paragraph yeah short very short paragraph uh, and I hope that your speaker is working fine, okay, so that you'll be able to hear me clearly and write it down, all right? Okay, so shall we? Are we ready here? Are we ready? Okay, come, let's start here. Okay, for dictation, yeah? I'm on dictation. Okay, ready? It's only one, two... Two sentences. Ah, two sentences only. Okay. So, right, ready for dictation. Okay. Plastic is useful. Plastic is useful because it is strong. Plastic is useful because it is strong and it lasts a long time. It lasts a long time. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, those qualities, those qualities also make plastic, also make plastic a 
a disaster for the environment. A disaster for the environment. A disaster for the environment because it takes two, it takes 1,000 years because it takes 1,000 years for this man-made material for this man-made material to break down. To break down. That's it. Okay. All right. Let me repeat. Plastic is useful because it is strong and it lasts a long time. Unfortunately, those qualities also make plastic a disaster for the environment because it takes 1,000 years for this man-made material to break down. All right? Okay. So I hope you get it. All right? I hope you get it. Okay. So let's see. How does it look like? Okay. So let me let me show you this one. Okay. So there will be three activities. Okay, we're going to uh, go backwards a little bit. There are three activities for listening. Okay, so the first one is dictation. The second one is MCQ, multiple choice questions, which actually, um, uh, which actually you can refer to your first and the second part of your listening test. Okay, that one. And then fill in, uh, filling in the blanks for the fourth part. Okay, so that is what I think that, you know, I can actually cover for, for today. Okay, so for dictation, okay, for dictation just now, this is how it looks like. Okay, so this is how it looks like. And you can refer to download textbook, your English download textbook. All right, so I took uh, this short, uh, paragraphs there, short ex abstract, extract there from your textbook. If you want to refer, it will be, hold on, yeah, let me have a look at it. Okay, if you have your textbook with you, you can refer to, let me see, this is on environment. This is on environment. Uh, Okay, I don't seem to be, ah, okay. It will be on page 58. Ah, yes, I actually put it down there. Mm. Page 58 there, okay. So, yeah. So, I hope that you, you were able to write down these words, okay. It is okay if you get everything wrong or maybe like 10% correct or 5% correct. It is okay. It is totally fine. You just need more practice to get things right. Okay, nobody in this world is so perfect that, you know, for the first time, he or she will get everything right. No, no. If you don't get everything right, it's okay. You can practice. Okay, so yeah, I hope that you were able to get this and write it down and, and you know, put it in the column so that it will be easier for you to tick and mark each uh, column and make sure that your spelling is correct, okay? For dictation, your spelling, punctuation is um, crucial. You need to make sure everything is correct. That is why I put uh, a table there so that it will be easier for you to mark it. And if there's, um, if there's uh, a mistake or an error there, 
Just do correction. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the next activity. I hope you guys are okay there. Are you guys all right? Are you guys all right? Okay, so yeah. Next one, MCQs, okay? And as you can see in your worksheet as well, there are nine questions, okay? Before you listen, uh, yeah, this is a drill that you need to do. Before you listen, you must read the questions. Read the questions, highlight the keywords. Okay, kena buat the benda ni. Baca soalan, lepas tu highlight, tandakan, uh, gariskan, do whatever uh, on the keywords. Okay, so let, let me show you what am I talking about. Okay. For example, the first question, Ferusha Lamborghini's family owns a owns memiliki. Memiliki apa? You can underline this. Okay, you can underline this word. And ah, green is a bit too dark. Okay, let me change the color. Ah, right. Owns a what? Okay, and you read the options as well. Is it one yard or one yard? Okay, read everything before you start. Okay, and I hope that you are reading all nine questions together with the options. Okay, baca soalan dengan jawapan pilihan sebelum mendengar. That is very important because it will actually help you to focus on what you need to listen. Okay, when you read the question, you know what you are listening for. Like I mentioned before, you are listening for details specific uh, details also, listening for vocabularies and, you know, whatnot, okay? On the slides that I've shown you before. Okay, Ferisha Lamborghini graduated as, okay, graduated. Dia ialah, dia belajar, apa, dia ambil jurusan apa? Ah, dia masuk college, dia belajar apa? Dia belajar untuk jadi apa? Is it a mechanic, machine, mechanical engineer? All right, okay, so highlight the words. So the words that I put in grey, you may highlight the words as well. Okay. All right. Ferisio learn about secrets of from a blacksmith. Okay. Blacksmith. Uh, blacksmith. What do you call it in English? Eh? Blacksmith. Orang yang buat buat macam. What do you call it in English? Let me Google this. Any ideas? What what is uh what is a blacksmith? What do you call blacksmith in in blacksmith black Blacksmith in a in Bahasa. What do you call blacksmith in Bahasa? Any ideas? Any ideas what a blacksmith is? Hmm. Let's use. Hmm. Any ideas? Uh, okay. Let me see. Give me a few, uh, a couple of minutes. Ah, right. Blacksmith. Tukang besi, ha? <laughs> Blacksmith is a tukang besi. <laughs> so sorry. I need some time to, uh, to, 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 to process it, okay? Blacksmith ialah tukang besi. Ha, dia belajar apa daripada tukang besi tu? Okay, dia belajar apa daripada tukang besi tu? Right, number four, successfully secure a job. Okay, what kind of job? Eh, what, uh, secure a job in Cavalier Rigi in Bologna. Betul ke salah? When the World War II hit, Croatia was assigned as a, okay, dikerja sebagai apa? Okay, which statements is true? Yang mana satu betul? Okay, siapa yang cakap benda ni? Okay, so this is actually you are uh, listening for opinions. Hmm, opinions, right? So you have Enzo Ferrari saying this and Lamborghini said this and whatnot. Okay, right. So I will play you uh I will play you a video. Uh the video has subtitles to it. Okay, the video has subtitles to it. However, even it has subtitles to help you. I would really encourage you to listen as well so that you'll be able to answer the, the questions there. Okay, so yeah, I'll new share. Okay, I'll share here. Okay, you can see Tukang Besi here. <laughs> All right, I hope that you guys are ready for this one. Okay, I hope you guys are ready for this one. And 
let's start here. Cool. All right. started with the people. He was just a farmer from Tinsel for Rock. In nineteen sixteen, Ferruccio was born on a farm in the rural town of Renazzo in northern Italy. His parents grew grapes to make wine for a living and raised him amongst their vines. They taught him to roll up his sleeves and have the drive to make quality products. Ferruccio took their lessons to heart but not in the way that they had hoped for or imagined. He was more interested in fixing their tractors than learning how to manage the farm. Along with being disappointing, it was considered risky to stray from the family's business. Still, Ferruccio chose to explore his passion, studying mechanics and establishing natural chemical industries. To his father's dismay, Ferruccio never looked back after graduating. He started training with a master blacksmith who shared all his iron work in all of but it wasn't enough to impress a major factory that he had his eyes set on. He had an idea in Bologna. At the time, the factory worked on maintaining the natural landscape. Headstrong and stubborn, Ferruccio persisted and managed to convince the team to hire him. When he turned 18, he left and returned to his hometown to announce it. There, he opened a workshop with his longtime friend, Adino Ferruccio. It wasn't until years later that he would discover it was first step towards turning his passion into a career. But first, he would have to escape the clutches of his family. When the Second World War hit, Ferruccio was torn away from his carefree life. He was drafted by the Royal Italian Air Force, who was assigned to work as a mechanic at the garrison in Rhode Island. Three years later, Italy surrendered. Italy has been concluded. Afterwards, the German forces took over the garrison and evicted the Italians. Ferruccio decided to stay and asked for permission to open his own workshop. Two years later, the Allied forces arrived. They took everyone in the garrison as prisoners, including Ferruccio. When they discovered his technical aptitude, they got him to work on fixing their vehicles. One year later, they allowed him to leave. Ferruccio's early years back home were far from blissful. His wife, Lilia, passed away while giving birth to their own child. Afterwards, Ferruccio kept himself busy at his workshop, where he mostly fixed pre war vehicles, lorries, and tractors. But one day, he received an urgent request from his father that changed the course of his life. I need a new tractor, Ferruccio's father agreed. It was then that Ferruccio was struck with a realization. Italy desperately needed to increase its agricultural production to recover from the war, but it needed better equipment to make that possible. Armed with good experience in working with Allied and Axis people, Ferruccio brought leftover military equipment and used them to make new tractors. They were built with an old British Morris engine modified to run on cheap diesel instead of expensive petrol. They were said to be more affordable and innovative than anything any tennis owner. Later, Ferruccio started a new company called Lamborghini Tractors. While his tractors were in demand, he needed more capital for production, so his father used his farm as collateral for a loan. The risk Ferruccio and his father took made it more risky than both of them could have imagined. Soon after, the company became one of the largest manufacturers of its kind. Ferruccio celebrated his success with good food, fine wine, and fast cars. He even started to collect Jaguars, Mercedes, Maserati, and Ferraris, but none of them equally satisfied him. He was particularly disappointed with his 
Ferrari. The plane would always break down. One day, he brought the Ferrari to his mechanic for review. Joe discovered that the clutch was identical to the one fitted into one of the tracks. This did not sit well for him since he paid 10 euros for the clutch his tractor used and paid Ferrari 1,000 euros for the same part. Later, he decided to tell Enzo Ferrari what the imperfections he found in his car. Along with the clutches needing frequent repairs, they were considered too Enzo brushed his chill off and insisted the problem wasn't with the car, but with him. You're a tractor driver, farmer. You shouldn't complain about my cars. They're the best in the world. Yes, I'm a farmer, but I'll show you how a sports car should be. That day, Ferruccio went home determined to prove what he was capable of. Many called his conquest great and believed he would squander his fortune. Still, Ferruccio forged ahead and started a new company on the he hired three of Ferrari's ex-employees and bought a large plot of land to build a factory. In just nine months, Ferruccio completed his first sports car featuring his astrological sign as the emblem, the Lamborghini 350G. It was considered a technical masterpiece and included a V12 engine, a five-speed transmission, four wheel disc brakes, and four wheel independent suspension. It was unveiled for the first time at the Turin Motor Show, praised by customers and critics. Ferruccio proved to Enzo and his doubters that he wasn't just a farmer, but also a mechanical genius capable of building superior cars. It was a sophisticated car that uh, had a lot of class and was easy to operate. Over the next few years, Ferruccio's tractor and sports car businesses this leadership style led to his team building the Warhammer GT and his secret project, the Viura P4. It was developed as a street race car and was the first in history to be made with a rear mid engine layout. It was kept a secret from Ferruccio since he was against the idea of building race cars. Several years before, he entered a prestigious race and crashed into the side of a restaurant. When Ferruccio found out, he decided not to scrap the idea. It turned out to be one of the best decisions he ever made. The Viara became known as the world's first supercar, and its rear mid engine layout became the standard for all hybrid sports cars. From then on, Lamborghini Trans Trans became a successful street and created more celebrations. The Espada, the Ista, the Haram, the Europa, and the Kuntana. They were said to be superior to other sports cars since they didn't use any wheels as rims, and the Kuntash was said to be most written about the Europeans. Unfortunately, Ferruccio's success came to a halt after facing a series of events beyond his control. A deal to supply Bolivia with 5,000 tractors was cancelled by half of the country facing it. The loss forced Ferruccio to sell his tractor company and 51% of his automobile in Lamborghini shares. Later, the global stock market experienced a dramatic crash, and the OAPEC started an oil embargo. It led to increased No, but the shortage of gasoline, the fact that it was, is affecting the employment not only of our own, but our nation. Ferruccio did his best to keep his businesses alive and managed to find buyers for his unsold tractor. Still, he decided to retire early and sold the remaining 49% of his automobile and Lamborghini shares. But he did keep a heating company that he owned and gave it to his son, Tonino. Later, Tonino pivoted towards building a successful traction and luxury business in his own house. Meanwhile, the new owner of automobile and Lamborghini Trans applied his brand of race car to make massive waves in all of the sports car world. A few years later, the Italian government sold the country for the company to two French billionaires. They hoped to renovate the old Lamborghini facility and hire new engineers, but they ran out of money, so the car had to crash the car. Chrysler made plans to import the brand name and the next one kept to make a profit, so they sold the company. They had more luck in making sales. It wasn't enough to weather the financial crisis of the year. It was then that Audi bought the company, recognized the need for greater attention to processes and product development. Under their leadership, Lamborghini was able to move beyond the end of the 21st century and became an active European brand. With the release of the Gallardo and the Murata, and the 
or assess your income. So sales jump from month to month, especially in 2019. I reviewed a report of record of sales and it's now about to get a bit of time. This is the story of how a farmer and her town of Forbes turned its parent or business into a sports team. For more inspiring stories and advice from today's most successful. All righty. Okay. I hope that you get it. Okay, I, I'm very sorry that I can't, I could not, uh, I cannot play the video twice for you to, to, to you know, to watch uh, again so that, you know, you'll be able to get the answers that you may miss out for this uh, activity. But I will share you the link over here. Okay, yep. Uh, so our first activity for MC, uh, our activity for MCQ is I took this um, YouTube video about uh, Lamborghini and yeah, I turned it something, uh, turn it into an exercise over here and you can perhaps um, screenshot this. Okay, you can print screen this and there's the link there. You may want to watch it again on your free time later on. Okay, by all means, go ahead. So yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, Lamborghini, he was originally a farmer. He was raised in a vineyard, uh, vineyard, okay? And yeah, he graduated as, you know, uh, he's a mechanic. So he knows the compartments of an engine. So that is what, that is where he, kind of, he understands how the engine works. And that is where he builds things using his name. Okay, and as you can see there, there's a picture of, you know, the Euros there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, he's a, a remarkable person to begin with. And there's a lot of things that you may learn from, from him as a person and what he has accomplished. All right, until right now, people actually, uh, you know, if someone actually owns a Lamborghini, it's like, you know, it's, you raise the standard. Uh, for yourself and also in the eyes of the public. You know? Yeah, I, I have a Lamborghini, you know, see what I have, okay, in, in, in my car collection, for example. All right, so yeah, you, you may watch this, okay, you may print screen this slide and you may watch this later on. Um, uh, you may take uh, this activity as your own activity after the workshop, all right? Okay, so the last one, the last one, fill in the blanks is, uh, like I mentioned before, this is in a in accordance to accordance to your fourth part of your listening paper. Okay, the last part of your listening paper, you will need to listen and fill in the blanks. Okay, so what we will be listening and watching to. Okay, so as you can see in the picture there, the statue, the guy is actually holding a Coca Cola. All right, okay, I do, I do not plan this. I just happen to come across this kind of videos one after another. You know, when you watch uh, YouTube, you'll be like, okay, I'm watching one of this. And then there's like a list of suggested uh, videos at the side or at the bottom there. So I just click, 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 click. Thing on. So yeah, I stumbled upon, you know, this kind of um, video. So I think that why I choose like, you know, Lamborghini and this Coca-Cola guy, you will find out that, you know, I learned something from, from, from watching this uh, video and I didn't know that Lamborghini was actually, he was, uh, he was the farmer. Okay. And I do not know that the founder, the person who actually created Coca-Cola was actually, a uh, okay, you will watch it uh, yourself. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Coca-Cola, right? You may print screen this if you think that later on you may not have the time to complete the, the, the worksheet, okay? So let me jump to the worksheet over here, okay? Let me jump over here, da, 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 da. All right? So again, before you watch, before you listen, Coca-Cola is the symbol of America. Read the whole abstract. Read, read, read. All right. So again, for the next activity, for this last activity for, lis uh, for this listening workshop, you will be watching a video without subtitles, okay, without subtitles, which means that you really need to listen. Um, the advantage is that when you watch, you may get some clues 
from the video, okay, because you are actually watching the video. However, in the real setting, you may really have to really listen, listen. Okay, uh, and another reason why I actually use YouTube videos so that it makes things more interesting. And if I were to make everything like much um but to exam, you may kind of like you know, you may be nervous, you may be anxious about how, how things are going to be in a real exam. But I think that nanti your cikgu akan buat benda ni, your teachers will drill you, nanti it will give you a lot of exercise, then uh, you may practice from that. But kalau nak buat sendiri, this is one of the things that you can do. Watch uh, YouTube videos and then you learn from there. Okay, learn from there. Make notes, for example, okay, uh, like what I did right now, or uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm actually taking the YouTube video and convert it, make it into a listening task over here, okay? So read the whole thing, right? And as you can see, Dr. John Pemberton created it and he was a famous, right, in the 1800s. All right. He fought in the war and miraculously, he moved to Atlanta and started a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company. After his near-death experience, John became addicted to, to cure his, right? he discovered some herbs. Okay, so we are short of time here. I will need to speed up and hold on, yeah, I will share. The next slide here with you, the next slide, the next uh, video with you, which is this one. Okay, I hope that you are ready. is widely known as being a symbol of America. It was created by Dr. John Pemberton, a famous physician in the 1800s. When the Civil War hit, he tossed okay. away his last hope for a luxury he went on to After getting caught in a direct line of fire and given life-threatening drugs, he became a practice But he miraculously near death experience built was 19 years old, he received his license to practice in Soviet medicine. It was known to use the principles of body herbalism to rid the body of harmful toxins. At the time, it wasn't well respected and men were suspicious of the practice. With that, he saw John Pemberton as a specialist in material and A few years later, John pursued a but not long after, he was forced to ditch his white lab coat for a bunny. The Civil War had erupted, and John was made a first lieutenant. Three years into battle, he got caught in a direct line of fire and was slashed to the signal. His doctors didn't think he would live and gave him the medication to leave the first line of fire. But he picked up from the miraculous surgery. From then on, The Civil War. John strived for a better life. He moved his family to Atlanta, became a senior member of the pharmaceutical company. The media called it one of the most impressive lab machines, and John was become a famous physician in the city. But behind closed doors, John was struggling. After his near death experience, he became a physician. But no cure in sight for what had he looked for a herbal remedy. At the time, he heard good things about a drink called Mid Mariana. It contained ground up cocos and red wine and was said to heal any ailment. That gave John the idea of making his own version to cure his morphine addiction. Okay. Using coca leaves, red wine, and honey nut, he created what he called Everton's French Blender. Coca leaves were known to act as a stimulant and suppress hunger, thirst, fatigue. 
12.1.0.5%. It was easy to get the results. Some doctors and pharmacists were noted that it was a possible cure for okay. As for cola nuts, they were high in caffeine and known to aid digestion. John Cleese strikes the importance of nuts in addiction with depression, anxiety, and different ailments, including headaches. To help other poor veterans, he set up a distribution network to sell his remedy. He would make this syrup in his lab and then ship it to partners and contractors and sell it as they would. The remedy was an instant hit and used by men. But the demand alone wasn't enough to keep the business going. John was faced with a challenge that forced him to pivot his new business, leading to the invention of clean coal. If you wear glasses or contacts, you must sit this. An award-winning doctor reveals us. The year that Emerson's bright light took him to Britain, Atlanta announced him rejoining other U.S. states, banning up the heat. Fearful that it would be the end of his new remedy, John raced to come up with a new invention. When he removed the wine, he realized the number of nuts made it extremely bitter. So he replaced it with a synthetic caffeine and then added sugar, citric acid, vanilla, lemon oil, an orange, nutmeg, coriander extract. Afterwards, John's bookkeeper, Frank Robinson, asked him to change the name to Cola Nuts. However, he insisted that it be spelled with two C's since it was a little more eye catchy. John took his advice and launched his new remedy, Clean Coal Cure. It was a total disaster. The first year of sales topped off at $50 with a subject cost of $70. John saw this as a failure. Meanwhile, Frank saw it differently. The loss was to be expected since the business was new. Some of the disappointing company put another grill in the middle. Marketing the remedy needed banners, street guard placards, and store audiences. John was hesitant. Frank believed that it was a risk worth taking. Fortunately, he wasn't wrong. Coca Cola became a hit for Atlanta. John and Frank proved that when faced with a challenge, of giving up could lead to new heights of success. In a strange twist of fate, John's health took a nosedive. His sales tightened. He was diagnosed with stomach cancer and relapsed to using it. Worried that money for his family and addiction was gone, he made the difficult decision to sell his shares. That didn't mean he had little expectations for the new remedy. He believed it would become a national drink hit. He kept a third of his shares for his son, Charles. At the time, Charles was in charge of manufacturing, but later became the new CEO himself. Frank feared that Coca Cola would have no one to steer John's vision for the business. So he took on the responsibility of finding the right investor as John. Early business contact, he met a wealthy and hardworking entrepreneur named Asa Kaplan. But Frank was in pain at home that he didn't think that was a good idea. No, but Frank knew better. While the two stood outside one day, Frank turned to the wife and said, You see that white people buy with holes in their pants? Well, we are going to push my new product to you so I can see what you buy with Coca Cola and Chesapeake. Asa was swayed by the company's vision and bought the rights to the Coca Cola name in 2009. And just as Frank predicted, he wasted no time in building the company. He not only expanded sales to new pharmacies and health food stores, but came up with an idea that made history. He gave out little slips of paper that could be redeemed for a glass of Coca Cola and soda fountains. At the time, they were considered a popular hangout spot where many went to social. It was the first instance in history where a company gave up what is now called Coca Cola for free samples. John's vision for Coca Cola was to convince them to make the most important food flavor the bad would help Coke and spread. The 
sadly, John Hammond did see his entire vision. Two years after Asa's heart had broken up, he succumbed to his morbid addiction and died penniless. With Charles Dunn's addiction worsening, Asa took over and founded the Coca-Cola Company, where he led the expansion of Southern Coca-Cola, every U.S. state, and then Canada, but he failed to create the demand in Europe. In Germany, anything other than beer, wine, or food was considered for children, whereas in France, buying an inferior American drink was considered as a law. Asa was also short-sighted when he came to Europe and the fell into his lap. One day, Was already successful in counting trends. What if it was Bob and Cruz? Asa asked with puzzled look. Yes, sir. Folks would take them on. Asa thought it was a ridiculous idea. He believed the future of Coca Cola was in counting trends. Modeling was an expensive operation that he wanted no part of. He told Joseph and Benjamin that they could model all the Coca Cola they wanted for just one of them. He had nothing. Failed, but it was a penny. Afterwards, Joseph and Benjamin found other people to finance and to build an operation to do the work for them. It became one of the first franchising businesses in America. To Asa's surprise, customers were hooked on the Coca-Cola. It became so popular that competitors tried to create their own version. Eventually, the Coca-Cola company decided to create something. Years later, the amount of Coca-Cola sold in bottles exceeded the number sold from soda and honey. Joseph and Benjamin sold this ridiculous idea to inspire Coca-Cola by counting tracks. Ain't the way for the continued success. The year after Coca-Cola developed its contour model, Asa resigned from the company. He was elected the mayor of Atlanta and handed the company over to his children. Three years later, they sold it for $25 million to a group of investors. At the time, it was the biggest financial deal in the history of the American South. One of the investors behind the deal was a banker named Ernest Butler, who took the company public that year. He streamlined Coca Cola's production process and ensured quality was maintained for the next 10 years. Not long after, President of the company. Robert was a marketing genius who worked his way up from being a truck salesman to general manager of the company. Under his leadership, the company rose to the tiny amounts of cocaine. Afterwards, it launched the metal tub holder, sales model packs, and automatic fountain dispensers. It also succeeded in taking care of Asa's unfinished business, creating the demand for Coca Cola in the dollar. The company advertised and gave it away and sold out, all to bring the most amount of refreshing drinks. Some bottles were created for Coca-Cola's sales to resemble champagne bags. They also created an association with many historical and celebratory events. When the U.S. Olympic team traveled to Amsterdam for the 1920 Olympic Games, they gave away 40,000 bottles of Coca-Cola. And when World War II erupted, they swore that every American They also created the modern image of Santa Claus, the jolly man in red suit. Before, he was seen as a lean man in red and green with a brown suit. Today, Coca-Cola is closely associated with American culture and is known as a national symbol. It's also the second most recognized brand in the world behind Nike. Every day, nearly two billion servings of its drink are served in more than 200 before Robert retired from Coca-Cola, he kept the company's success separate. There is no limit to what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. This is the story of a pharmacist turned war veteran and his successors built Coca-Cola's seven-fold billion dollar brand. All right. Okay. So you get the point. You get the point. All right. Uh, 
and let's get back here. So yeah, I guess the, the video actually helped you to fill in like probably half of the blanks over there. Okay, so yeah, as I mentioned that you have the advantage uh, to watch uh, the video, okay, instead of just listening, which will kind of like perhaps bore you to death on a Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right, so you may print screen uh, this slide if you wish to watch the video again, okay, if you wish to watch the video again. So there is the uh, the YouTube link over there, okay? And if you have uh, done everything, oops, oops, okay, hold on, yeah. Oh, something is missing over there. Oh, okay. I actually put out, uh, I mean, there's the answers for, for activity A. Hold on, let me see what went wrong there. Yeah, yeah, okay, so. For this one, uh, you can see that, is it, does it appear? Oh, okay, that's weird. It didn't appear on the slide there. Okay, anyways, so you may print screen this, okay, as your reference for the answers uh, for the listening activities in your worksheet there. Okay, all right. Okay, and just now it was for the dictation is this one. Uh, you may refer to download page 58. And for this one, it will be uh, this one. Okay, so the, uh, the second activity was on Ferruccio Lamborghini. And the second one is on John Pemberton on Coca-Cola. Right, so my point is that if you want to have your own successful business, part of it, you need to be how to say, you need to have a certain level of education, okay, certain level of education. Don't get too carried away. I think this, uh, this point I did mention to my own students in my school that, you know, don't be too carried away with whatever that you see on social media. And uh, like, you know, a lot of Insta famous say like, oh, tiba-tiba, like berjaya. Uh, apa, uh, they will say that bagi statement yang macam, uh, oh, abang pun uh, dulu pun gagal SPM tapi berjaya je tengok mana abang sekarang Ab abang ada apa uh, uh, perniagaan yang yang berjaya and what not and it's like maybe, maybe, okay maybe if you happen to, yeah I mean we know that not everyone is uh, good in academics however you need to have a backup plan. Even if you know that you're going to fail your SPM, for example, which I do not, uh, which you should not. You should, you have to have a plan what you need to do, what you want to do after school. You don't be just like, oh, okay, just follow the flow. If I have the money, I'll just do whatever. No, you don't do that, okay? And if you look at uh, how Ferruccio and how Dr. John uh, Lem uh, Pemberton, they are quite accomplished themselves before they have their own brand, they have their own, be before they have their own products. I mean, they are not perfect, perfect human being. Like if you look at Dr. Uh, John Pemberton, he was, uh, I would say that he was like, if you were to, like, nak, nak letak bahasa kasar, like, uh, he's a drug addict pun macam, yeah, perhaps because he was addicted to morphine. Okay, because, uh, yeah, because of his addiction, dia ketagihkan morphine. However, you know, putting aside his negative traits, see what Coca, how, how Coca-Cola is right now. And I I wouldn't say that I really, really like Coca-Cola, but if you if you were to give me Coca-Cola and Pepsi, I would prefer Coca-Cola. Pepsi that's a dove. I have, in my opinion, I, I, I prefer Coca-Cola to Pepsi. <laughs> All right, okay. So that's it for our listening. I will move on to speaking right now. Okay, I will move on to speaking. Okay, oh. I hope you can see this. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so for today, for listening and speaking, I will be showing you quite a number of, it's not quite a number, I, a, a few uh, YouTube videos, okay? A few YouTube videos and for speaking, okay. Speaking is your 
third paper in your for your whole English paper. Ah, right. So uh, I made a mistake there. It's supposed to be 31st of October. <laughs> it's supposed to be the uh, 31st of October, 2.30 until 4.30. All right. Right now, I hope you are still with me. Okay. Still masih kat sini eh. I hope you guys are still with me here. And right now, we are going into speaking. All right. Okay. Speaking. Next up. Ta-da. All right. Before we begin, again, just like your uh, listening uh, workshop, uh, listening uh, session just now, um, for this uh, session, I will hope that you have your download textbook with you next to you. Uh, you will have your, um, your worksheet. If you do not have it uh, printed out, you can just access through the link shared as well as um, perhaps your phone if you need to print screen or screenshot anything. And your stationery and your notebook to jot down anything important. Okay, so why download textbook? Because I will want to show you that your textbook has a lot of things that you can use as reference, okay? Your textbook is pretty good in my opinion. Okay, so next. Right, for speaking, okay? For speaking, just, just a reflection, okay? You know, sometimes just ask yourself, have you, have you ever wondered, you know, how you can be good in a language? Which uh, one you know, be good in speaking English, for example, how to be good in speaking Korean, okay? Which one nak nak jadi orang kata bagus, nak nak speaking pun, Mm, you have the confidence to speak. How do you actually learn a language? Okay, so are you born with it? Do you learn it? How and why? Okay, so some people they learn different languages for for different purposes. If let's say if you have uh families or friends who uh who are preparing themselves to further their studies in Germany, in Korea, for example, they may have to learn the language, they may have to learn Korean here, they may have to learn German here in Malaysia before they go to the respective countries, okay? Yeah, you need to, to I guess, like whatever that, uh, he or she is doing is to prepare himself or herself. Tak adalah nanti bila sampai dekat uh, German, uh, uh, ya, yeah, dekat negara, uh, negara German ataupun sampai dekat Korea, tiba-tiba macam terkejut. Okay, terkejut beruk. Uh, macam, ah, okay, how am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? You know, like not 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 everyone speaks English. Okay, how am I supposed to talk? Uh, apa, nak, nak cakap dengan siapa? Okay, nak, nak minta apa? You know, uh, tak ada macam tu. So, you need some kind of preparation. And if you see that, you know, uh, children, okay, young children, budak-budak kecil, yang fasih berbahasa, banyak bahasa, fasih berbahasa, lebih daripada satu bahasa. Macam mana budak-budak kecil ni belajar? Compared to us, kita rasa macam, we feel that, oh, nak belajar English pun susah. Nak speaking pun susah. Tapi macam mana kalau kita, kalau kita tengok budak-budak kecil yang fasih berbahasa, how do they learn? How do they learn actually? Uh, okay, so, some some uh, some parents, some children, they are privileged. Orang kata bernasib baik sebab mungkin, mungkin dekat rumah, uh, one parent is speaking in English, the other parent is speaking Bahasa. Or maybe at a very young age, uh, these children, they are exposed. They orang ni macam didedahkan dengan pelbagai Bahasa. So, daripada situ, dia orang boleh uh, you don't have to learn Bahasa too. Just like you, if you are a diehard K-pop fan, for example, every day, setiap hari, tengok cerita K-pop, setiap hari, dengar, dengar apa, lagu Korea, lama-lama, pandai tak? Pandai tak uh, nyanyi lagu Korea tu? Of course, you will be able to at one point because there is repetition, okay? Benda tu asyik berulang, alright? So, yeah, just like listening, speaking, uh, and also learning English, you need repetition, you need practice. That is very, very important. Okay? Bukan sebab nak dapatkan A, tapi if you want to learn something, apa-apa pun, benda tu datang dari practice, berlatih. You need it every day. Okay? Perhaps. Right. So, 
Do you recognize any of this? Okay, I am very, very sure, very, very sure that you recognize these three. Okay, these three. Okay, the first picture on the left. Okay, the first picture on the left. It is popular right now. Squid Game. Uh, Squid Game. Huh? I watch Squid Games and I hope that you guys, uh, some of you, uh, most of you have watched it. And uh, well, there are some like, much, um, some people say that, oh, you should not be watching Squid Games. It is not good. And I was like, mm, okay, okay, okay. You are entitled with your own, to your own opinion. But I've watched it like, uh, okay. <laughs> and if you have access to it, just watch it. <laughs> okay, just watch it. I mean, well, it, it may not be suitable for younger children. But yeah, like I said, you need to have like my jam. You need to know how to censor. Ah, censor. Okay, tahu apa yang yang boleh boleh terima atau apa benda yang tak boleh terima. You know that anything that you see pun ada benda yang okay, ada benda yang tak okay. So benda yang tak okay tu kita just abaikan. Ha, kita just tengok suka suka saja. Okay, I'm not trying to say that to encourage you to do bad things. But, you know, this is the real world, okay? Right, so as you can see here, the, 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 the picture in the middle, you can see that it's Lisa there. So Lisa is one of the members in, in, in Blackpink. And you can see that the picture on your left, on the left, I took it from the Squid Game. And what actually I want to focus on is the guy in the middle there by the name of Anupam Tripathi and you can see the ones on the right is Sheila Amza. Okay, so I'm very sure that you know all of them and what is so special about them? Okay, if you really know them, what is so special about them? Okay, so let's see here. Okay, let me show you this one. Okay, let me show you this one. Ta-da! Alrighty, okay. Register me as an actor, not so that frame of it. Okay, I want, I want to take that. My desire is to take that frame and go beyond. But it can happen, it cannot happen. It's a matter of time. Back in 2010, on 21st of the proceed to South Korea to follow his dream of being an actor. My friend told me, like, there is a scholarship. Okay, so do you see that? Okay, do you see that? What he said is that yes, okay, yes, it is difficult. He has no, he has no basic knowledge of Korean. Tak tahu sepatah pun bahasa Korea. Tapi because he wants his, he wants to achieve his dream to become an actor, and you know, scoring a scholarship means a lot because he knows that he comes from a you know, a, a normal family, maybe, you know, uh, by scoring himself a scholarship, he will be able to study for free and he will be able to go to Korea. Okay, siapa tak nak kan belajar kat over the sea? Over the sea, okay. So, bila pergi, pergi kat Korea and then he knows that he needs to do something, okay. And what I'm trying to say is that why I show you this video is that, you know, like him, okay, he is famous right now. Kalau you all cheat, tengok cerita Squid Game pun, dia nampak lain daripada yang lain because of his, uh, uh, what skin tone, he's slightly darker. And then 
Yelah daripada orang Korea, Korea, Korea lain yang putih-putih macam tu I'm not, I'm not trying, to, trying to be racist here Tapi he stands out because he's different Okay Lepas tu dia main watak nama Ali So how he come How he you know He came to Korea and how he rise to stardom Is what you know Whatever that you see here Kita tengok nampak dia berjaya But what he has gone through for the past 10 years Okay, apa yang dia dah lalui 10 tahun lepas, we do not see that. Okay, dia tak faham Korean but he take it as a challenge and like he said, try, at least try. So I want to tell you that try. Don't think English is something susah. Okay, susah. No, it's not susah. Okay, so this is, this is Anupam Tripathi. So he is, uh, apa, dia, he's famous. Uh, because of Squid Game, everybody likes Squid Game, and he, he is he is famous because of Squid Game as well, and he is different. Okay, All right. So this is Anupam Tripathi. Okay, next one, next one. This one is about Lisa. Okay, and as you can see there, the title Blackpink Lisa shared her experience during trainee days. He was a she was pula. She was uh she is a Siamese. Dia orang Siam. And then uh, he got through, breakthrough to Korean K-pop scene after she was successful in, in an audition. And when she comes to Korea, she must learn how to speak Korean so that she can sing in Korean. Okay, right. So this video is not in English, but there is a, a subtitle. Okay, let's see. This one. Yeah. Okay. In this short clip as well, you can see that, you know, Lisa doesn't know a single word of Korean except for hello, annyeonghaseyo, all right? So when she came to Korea, like it or not, do you see she mentioned that she is not allowed to communicate with anyone in English, okay? So kalau kita dalam keadaan dia, dalam situasi dia, we have no choice. Kita tak ada, we have no choice, we don't, kita tak ada pilihan but to learn the language okay but to learn the language okay so do you see that ah so dalam keadaan tertentu like this all right so let's come back here ah all right so yeah that is my point okay that is my point and if you if you see like Sheila Amzah kan okay Sheila Amzah she's a Malay she's uh, uh, one of the apa uh, singers in Malaysia and she has beautiful voice i'm not a but you know, unfortunately, I'm not a fan of hers. Uh, she became famous. So, uh, I think she won some singing uh, singing competition, and then uh, she starts singing. She started to sing in Mandarin, and then uh, to perfect her pronunciation and to for her to be able to speak in Mandarin better, she took up lessons, Mandarin lessons, and that's where she becomes. Uh, good at uh, good in Mandarin, okay. Yeah, so I would say that where there's a will, there is a way. Ah, okay. And another example that I can give you is you know, you can see that workers in Mama, okay, some of the Mama shop, Mama restaurants, uh, some of the Mama restaurant that hires, um workers directly from India, okay, yang betul-betul fresh daripada negara India tu, 
and you can see them able to take customers' orders after like what one week they are here. Okay, they don't believe check up like you dah. Sebab apa? Kalau they don't tak nak check up like you, how are they supposed to take down orders? Okay, uh, you know you look at Bangladeshi, yang bangla 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 yang ada kat 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 Malaysia ni. You know, like nobody speaks Bangladeshi with them. Okay. Nobody speaks their language, so like it or not, they must, they have to learn how to speak Bahasa when they are in Malaysia. So, yeah, I mean, for you, if you have the choice, yes, you have the choice. And I would say that you are very lucky that you are multilingual. Kita semua ni multilingual. Kita boleh berbahasa lebih daripada satu bahasa. Ada setengah orang tiga bahasa, ada setengah orang empat bahasa. Depending on your how how is your upbringing, your family background, one and yeah, your willpower to learn a new language. Okay, right. So next, let's see. So for speaking, okay, for speaking, as you can see in your speaking task, there are three parts to it. Okay, there are three parts to your to your speaking uh, test. The first one is individual response, individual long-term and discussion. Okay, let's watch this short video, the last video that I will be showing you for today on how to speak better. And okay, so you can see this one and this, this one. Okay, so this video will take about six minutes. Tips for improving your English speaking skills. If you want to improve your English speaking skills, the only thing you can do is to practice. However, learning through grammar or listening to English alone will never help you. You have to speak out sentences to improve your speaking skills. So the question is how to deal with the matters you are facing with. Firstly, if you don't have any friends to practice speaking English with you, what can you do? There is a tip for you to actually speak for yourself. This method also helps to improve your grammar, vocabulary, and sentence structure. Especially after you practice this regularly you can feel confident to express your ideas in English. And the key is imitation. It doesn't mean that you repeat exactly what you hear from the native speaker. For example, Nice to meet you. My name's Hannah. Repeat, nice to meet you. My name's Hannah. What I mentioned is to paraphrase what you hear in your own sentences in some different levels. Here are some steps. The first step, change it with the different subjects. Like, for instance, you will hear, I'm 18 years old and I still live with my parents. She's 18 years old and she still lives with her parents. I have to go on diet with my wife last month. He had to go on a diet with his wife last month. He had worked for this company for almost 20 years. They have worked for this company for almost 20 years. Second, instead of repeating, you can develop the ideas by giving the detail happened in the past and something planned in the future. For example, with the above sentence like, one, I'm 18 years old and I live with my parents. You can describe more by yourself, such as, she used to live with her grandparents when she was a little girl. Then when she turned 18, she moved to live with her parents. But in the future, she will try her best to buy her own house to live independently. Or, two, I had to go on a diet with my wife last month. You can add some results. You get, like, he had to go on a diet last month with his wife, and now he is proud that they all have 
perfect body shape. So, obviously, by paraphrasing and developing ideas like that, you can learn more about grammar, as well as improve your ideas and your vocabulary. After learning how to change one sentence, you should challenge yourself by trying paraphrasing a larger portion of your speech, your conversation, or even your full story. You can give more information in the speech, learn to apply some linking words, add more adjectives and adverbs to objects or people, or even change different sentence structure. For instance, with the speech below. My daily routine is like other people. I get up at 6.30 and then I brush my teeth and have breakfast 30 minutes later. At about 7.30, I go to school on foot and start my school time at eight. You can imitate with more advancement like his daily routine is normally like other people. He gets up at 6.30 and brushes his teeth before he has breakfast at approximately 7. And then 30 minutes later, he walks to school because he forgot to repair his bike yesterday. It takes him 20 minutes to arrive at school. And luckily, he still has 10 minutes left to take a breath and revise lessons before his school time starts. In short, you only improve your speaking skill by practicing speaking every day. It's good to imitate, but you should make use of this method by a combination of imitating and paraphrasing, because it will make enormous effects on many aspects of English skills, not only for speaking skills. All right. Okay. So like I mentioned before, right, in order for you to be good at speaking, you need to practice every day. Okay. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Make sure that you do that every day. And, you know, looking at how short the time that you have right now, uh, today is the end of October and you have December, December, October, November, December, January, literally about like three months, three months. Yeah three months time for you to prepare yourself for your listening and speaking test, which I think will be scheduled in February. Okay, so you'll be sitting for your, if I'm not mistaken, in February and uh, your reading and writing tests will be in March. That's what I heard, the information that I get. Okay, so three months time, three months time, anything can happen. It's all up to you, right? Okay, so let's come back here to the slides. And okay, so we are done with this. Okay, next one. When you speak, okay, when you speak, make sure that you people understand you, okay? Even though you may, you know, your, your, your grammar is all over the places, it is okay as long as people understand what you're trying to say. And you must speak clearly, okay? Speak clearly. Speak clearly because uh, so that people can hear you. When people cannot hear you, that's it, you know? That's it. People don't, uh, will not understand what you're trying to say because the goal of you speaking to other people is to make other people understand what you are trying to say and get the message across. All right, okay, next up. So in your speaking test, you will be assessed uh, three on these three uh, components. The first one, grammar, vocabulary, and communicative competence. So grammar, of course, you need to speak using the right um, English grammar. Try, try, like, uh, like Anupam said, try, okay? We don't expect perfection, but the most important thing is you have to make an effort to speak, okay? Vocabulary, the choice of words. If you are talking, if you are given a topic about your favorite food, don't talk about your favorite movie, okay? So stick to the topic that you're supposed to say, 
to talk about and use the words that are related to the uh, topic, okay? Uh, if you're talking about food, you can use words like delicious, mouth-watering, what else? Um, recipes, cooking, all right, words that relates uh, words that related to the topic, communicative competence, which means that uh, you know this is uh, especially important when it comes to the third part of the speaking test. Okay, whereby you will, whether or not you are able to sustain a conversation, whether or not you are able to uh, agree, disagree, asking questions, getting uh, responses, you will be able to discuss and whatnot. All right. Okay, so next one for your speaking skills. Before you sit for your test, obviously, you must be prepared and practice. Like I said before, three months time, anything can happen. It's all up to you. Practice, practice, practice. And during the test, your audience will be the interlocutor or the assessor. Okay. And also your the partner that you will be going in for the test. Okay. And also, uh, just like writing, keep it short and simple. Um, you say what is necessary. Okay. Cakap benda-benda yang penting dan yang berkaitan. Kau jangan merewang. Ha, kalau cakap pasal favourite food, you stick to favourite food. Okay, jangan cakap pasal uh, my favourite movie is tiba-tiba masuk. Okay, benda yang tak berkaitan. No, 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 no. Okay, interact with your audience. Talk to the teacher. Talk to your partner. Okay, when you need to talk to them. Speak with sincerity and passion. So like I said, make effort. Okay, don't worry about your grammar. Make effort efforts and your speech appropriately and if you practice every day you will be fluent fluent maksudnya fasih okay mesti nak kena fasih sikit ah when you practice then you will be good at it and you will be more confident okay so this is how uh, the scenario will look like ah okay so bila masuk dekat dalam bilik tu when you walk into the uh, exam room this is how it looks like so this will be you kejap eh okay so this one is student nampak sini okay so these two candidates okay so two person here and the interlocutor the interlocutor is a teacher who will be asking you questions all right so why like uh, why do you need to speak clearly speak don't don't scream but speak um, speak for, 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 for people to be able to hear you, okay? And, and as you can see here, there's a table here. You don't whisper. Jangan, don't swallow your words as well. Okay, bercakap, uh, gunakan suara yang tak terlalu kuat dan tak terlalu perlahan. So, uh, the most important thing is the interlocutor here will, uh, is able to hear you. Boleh dengar, all right? Uh, okay, so let's erase this. So you will be going into the room with a partner, but I don't think that you are given the freedom to choose who you can go in the room with. Okay, uh, most likely uh, the partner will be, you know, the person who is uh, before or after you in the name list. So if let's say if you are if you want to choose your friends, there may be a mixed up here and there. Nanti the salah masuk marka and whatnot. So we do not want that kind of confusion. So yeah, it could be the person before you or the person after you. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, memang masuk berdua, dia takkan masuk seorang seorang. Okay, next up will be okay. Right, so the first part, individual response. Okay, this is the easiest part. Okay, the easiest part of all, icebreaking. This is an icebreaking session whereby the interlocutor is trying to get to know you, asking you some personal questions. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this. Right, the second part is individual long term. Okay, individual long term, whereby you'll be talking on a topic. Okay, you'll be talking on a topic for about like, a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, okay? And as you can see here in the worksheet, uh, how can you prepare yourself for the second part is, okay, for the first part, you can try to introduce yourself, like what I did with my students when they started coming back to school, okay? Introduce yourself in English. 
like you mentioned, uh, say to what's your name, how are you, and, and whatnot. And I would suggest that when you answer, when you answer, you answer in complete sentence. Okay. For example, if the interlocutor, if the teacher were to ask you, um, how are you today? Of course, I know that you would say, I'm fine. I'm fine. Find je, find je. But if you were to talk to your friends, like, kau apa cerita? Kau sihat? Aku sihat. Kau? Okay, what about you? What about you? Of course, we will ask back that person. Okay, so same as this one, even though, if it, even though it is a exam also, but I think that is part of manners, adab. Ah, okay, adab. So you can, you can ask back, like, I'm fine, thank you, what about? What about you? Okay, I'm fine. Thank you. What about you? Okay, manners, manners. Jaga adab. Okay, individual long term. Okay, what you can do for you to keep on talking? You need to keep talking. Okay, so show and tell. Show and tell. Masuk dia. Um, if you have something that is your favorite, for example. Okay, my favorite. Uh, my favorite gadget is my phone. Okay, my favorite gadget is my phone. Uh, this is an iPhone and I bought this. I, I, have, I had this phone for about two years. Uh, I got this phone as my birthday present. My father bought me this blah, 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 blah. Cakap benda yang berkaitan dengan the item. Okay, that is one example. Okay, the second example, I uh, the second activity, I've already stated there, watch a video and talk about it based on your understanding. And during the exam, okay, during the exam, you will be given a booklet and also a topic with four points. Okay, with four points. And you, what you can do is that you, when you talk, you answer the questions. Jawab so I learn. Okay, jawab so I learn. Let me give you example over here. For example, okay, like this one. Um, my hobbies. Okay, I'm just gonna take a book very quickly. Okay, talk about your hobbies. Okay, can you see that? So for this topic, you are given four bullet points there. Okay, you are given four bullet points there, and you will be given time to prepare. Don't worry much about it because, like, like I say, jawab so I learn. When you speak, you speak based on the bullet points here, and you pretty much answer the questions. Okay, answer the questions. Right. The bad news is, okay, when you go, when you sit for your speaking test, you are not allowed to bring in any paper and pen for you to write down anything. No, okay. As you can see there, no writing is allowed. When you get, when you are in the room it, uh, itself, you are not given pen and paper to write. Tak boleh menulis. That is why a simple thing to do is jawab soalan. Apa yang dibagi jawab je. Okay, buka mulut bercakap. Right. So respond appropriately. Okay, end with, okay, bila dah habis bercakap tu rasa macam, okay, I think that's it, that's it, that's it, okay, that's it, and you end it politely, that's all teacher, thank you, okay, that's all teacher, thank you, uh, that's it, thank you, okay, jangan, jangan, jangan duduk senyum, hmm. I don't know what it, what that means, okay, doesn't, doesn't sit there and smile, hmm. no, okay, say something, uh, that's it teacher, thank you. Even though you, if you are, if you're nervous, thank you, teacher. That's it, teacher. Okay, manners, please. Right. Okay. Next. So, uh, this one I took it from download. Okay. Topic: Where on earth? Uh, page hundred twenty nine. Uh, yeah. On the topic: Where on earth? A language that you wish to learn. Okay. So if you if you refer back to page hundred and twenty nine in your textbook. Is this page over here? Oops. Is this page over here? All right. Okay. So a language that you wish to learn. So I've given you uh, four bullet points that you may want to practice after the workshop. You may print screen this. By all means, go ahead. 
Ah, will it please screen? So, which language do you want to learn? How will you learn the language? Why do you need to learn the language? How will the language benefit you? Okay, if you choose English, okay, if you choose English, for example, uh, I wish to improve my English language. Uh, I think that uh, there are many ways for me to improve my English language. First of all, I have to practice every day. Okay, so bila bercakap tu, there are four points. Jawab soalan, bercakap. Cuba, cuba bercakap. Don't worry, again like I said, don't worry about your grammar. Try, try, try. Okay, so you have time to practice, practice. All right, print screen, done. Okay, next part. Okay, this is the part that maybe I would want to um, focus a little bit more. Okay, because part one, part two, part three. Part one being the easiest part. Part two, moderate. Part three is the more complicated part. Kalau kita main game pun sama juga. Senang, lepas tu susah, 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 susah. Okay, level one, level two, level three sampai level seratus. Takdanya macam when you start off with something, you terus masuk level seratus. No, there's no such thing as that. Okay, so part three is the discussion. Okay, as you can see in the slide there, candidate to talk about a given topic for two minutes, come to a decision. Okay, for this part here, you are required to talk with your partner. Okay, you are supposed to talk with your partner. And refer to textbook. Okay, fine. So therefore, for this part, you can actually refer to YouTube. Okay, that's the beauty of PDPR. Memang uh, online learning tu rasa macam, I mean, for me, it's like, some of you may not like it. I do have my, my, you know, the, it is it is difficult mm. for for you know to have to carry out online classes with students and whatnot. I totally understand it because I've been through that. But the beauty of it is that if you if you know how to actually online class trying to teach you to be really resourceful, okay? Uh, to be resourceful, to learn how to look for information that are related to your learning, okay? So that's why I use a lot of YouTube videos. And for this one as well, you can, okay, let me share this with you, okay, how you can, how you can uh, come. Let's see this one. Okay. If you turn on YouTube over here, you can search for CEFR SPM. Okay. You can see that CEFR SPM 2021 English Speaking Test. Click on that. Okay. You can refer to these videos uploaded here. I know it's kind of staged, but still it gives you a a rough idea of on how the speaking test is carried out and your performance. If you perform at certain level, kalau bercakap macam ni, okay, dapat markah macam ni. Okay, nampak tak? Dekat sini, okay, untuk video ni, Farid dengan Farhan dapat skor 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2. So this one is the average and this one is the excellent one. Okay, you have 5, 6, 5, 6. How did they actually score? Five six five six so high score okay at least at least set a goal for yourself to get three three four three four five okay three four five and kenapa Farid ni dapat satu dua you can watch it on your own later on okay so this will be a good reference for you all right so this will be a good reference for you on how you can actually you know um prepare yourself for your speaking test. Okay, so this one. Next part. Okay, you can refer to download page uh, 91 here. Download page 91. Mana dia? 91. Okay, so 91, you can see here, this is the diagram. Okay, so this is a mind map. Right? In your test, in your speaking test as well, you will be given a booklet with a mind map. 
Okay, with the mind map. I know this is not like the bulat-bulat mind map. This is a petak-petak mind map, but still it is a mind map. Okay, how can Hannah attract more customers to her new shop? So I know that uh, your teacher may have done this with you. Okay, so this is an example. And how you can, again, how you can improve in your speaking, you need to practice. Mungkin tak ada kawan, okay? Uh, you can do this on your own as well. All right, first, if you don't have a friend, okay, get a friend to take turns to talk about something, learn to agree, disagree, discussion. Okay, if you don't have a friend, you can role play. Role play maksud dia, Nampak tak macam, oh, okay. Uh, how can Hannah attract more customers to her shop? Uh, I think Hannah should invite local people to a launch party. Like, you know, maybe she can have a party. Oh, really? Um, but I think that she should put, put up some advertisements maybe in the social media. Oh, really? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so you role play alone. Memanglah nampak macam orang gila. <laughs> but... I guess like, you know, daripada you tak bercakap langsung, right? So that is one of the things that you can try. And in in this um, handout as well, in this worksheet, I put up uh, one uh, exercise there. Why do people use the social media? Okay, why do people use the social media? So as you can see there, oh, uh, why do people use the social media? I think uh, people, everybody, or literally everybody, uh, including us teenagers using the social media uh, to share personal experiences. Like for example, I can uh, record my vlog and share it on my YouTube. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I think uh, besides uh, sharing uh, a person's vlog, traveling, like travel log or something, I think uh, people uh, use um, the social media to share their pictures as well. Oh, yeah, I do agree with that. Ah, you know that kind of thing? Ah, right? So, yeah, I may look specific over here, but I hope you get the point. All right? I hope you get the point. So, yeah, you may not get uh, a friend to talk to, but this is what you can do on your own. Okay? So, one activity is there. Right? Useful phrases. When you discuss, you discuss professionally. No arguing should be happening. Uh, no arguments, no arguments, no arguments. Okay. Even kalau kalau in real life sekali pun, kalau kita tak setuju sekali pun, ada cara dia untuk kita tak setuju. Uh, so that is why this is like social skills. This is part of social skills. Cara kita bercakap tu melambangkan peribadi kita. How we speak actually reflects how who we are. All right. So there are a lot of ways for you to, to agree and disagree. If you disagree, kalau tak setuju sekali pun, uh, saya rasa okay. Tapi saya rasa, Ella rasa, ah, okay. So I agree with you, but, ah, uh, but I think that, okay, justifying your opinion, giving giving reasons. I think that nowadays people uh, use the social media just to get attention. Oh, I agree with that because I've seen a lot of people uh, doing um, things and uploading uh, irrelevant and inappropriate videos on social media just to get people's attention. I disagree with what you say because I think that you know, that kind of thing. All right, sequencing your ideas. Sequencing. So when you have a lot of ideas, you need to organize it. Okay, first, uh, people use the social media to share ideas, to share knowledge, and uh, to share the pictures, to advertise their, um, their business, to put out advertisements about their business, and so forth. Okay, first, second, third, fourth. Use linking words. Okay, asking your partner's opinion. Okay, so this one. Let me conteng this one. Asking your partner's opinion. Okay, for the third part, tolong jangan gila kuasa. <laughs> tolong jangan, don't monopolize everything. Jangan gila kuasa. Don't like, macam jadikan that, that session to your session. No, you're supposed to talk with your friend. And you're supposed to help each other. Ah, tolong, tolong, tolong kawan. Tolong kawan. Right? 
uh, don't monopolize everything. Jangan do asyik cakap je. Your friend nak cakap something tu tak ada peluang nak cakap. No, don't be selfish. There are ways for you to help your friend. Okay, and as you can see there, uh, I've labeled the page numbers there over there. And you can see over here, like I labeled here, I put a sticky note there. Okay, your textbook is, is very useful. Okay, your textbook is very useful. So on page 91 over here, you can see there, agreeing and disagreeing, what you should say. What is the more appropriate way to say? I agree with you. I think you are right about that. If you disagree, I disagree. Uh, I think you are right, but... But, uh, okay, I don't think that's the case because I wouldn't say that because, okay, you have a point, but, okay, but, uh, all right. So, yeah, I think by, uh, I've indicated the page numbers, you may print screen this, okay, go ahead. You can print screen that and you can put uh, sticky notes on your book, okay, sticky notes. And for each, okay, justifying your opinion, for example, for each unit in your download textbook, it comes in sequence of reading, uh, grammar, language awareness, listening, speaking. So, setiap speaking, <clears throat> setiap speaking lesson in your textbook, there is always a language box, dekat, a language box, a language bank dekat bawah sini. Okay, language bank. So this language bank will actually help you to, to prompt, to speak. Uh, when, especially, it is very useful when it comes to discussion. Ah, so asking your partner's opinion, page 65. Let's see, page 65. Ah, okay, asking your partner's uh, opinion. What do you think about? Do you agree? Do you agree with what I say that... People nowadays use social media to get attention. Do you agree? Tolong kawan. Okay. Don't monopolize the whole session as if it is your talk show. No, don't do that. Okay. It is time for you to help your friend. Master. Okay. Right. So you may label all those. Okay. Next one. Good job. Yeah. Let me erase this. And let's move on. Oops. Why did you come back here? Hold on, yeah. And yeah, okay. So this is another uh, practice. Okay, so this is, oh, why is it going there? Oh, it come back here. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay, so this is another practice. Okay, why might people choose these activities to enjoy their free time? Okay, so why do people read during their free time? Why do people do sports, choose to do sports? Why do people cook? Why do people watch uh, movies? Why do people prefer spending time with their friends? Why? So when you are discussing, okay, when you discuss, oh, uh, okay, I think that, I think this one, okay, let's take this one. Okay, why do people use the social media? Let me see. Okay, to get information, okay. As you discuss, you need to come to a consensus, okay. Capai kata putus. Lepas berbincang, capai kata putus. Okay. All in all, what do you you both think? That's why you need to discuss. Okay. Uh, uh, we think that uh, people nowadays use the social media to get uh, to get information. Uh, to get information because uh, uh, there are we can access to a lot of information on the internet. Uh, about anything under the sun, about our learning, about um, about people, about another culture, and we can use um, different platforms to get this kind of information, for example, like YouTube. Okay, so you need to come to a consensus. Kata, kata, uh, kata putus, last sekali. Ah, dekat situ, okay. So, yeah, pretty much. Yes, okay. So, all in all, okay, I hope that my talk last week and this week and also for this, um, for this speaking workshop, okay, 
in general, how to improve, okay? How to improve, you need to practice. In the video, YouTube video that I've uh, played just now, practice where you can, when you can, don't be afraid to speak in English. Biarlah orang nak cakap kita ni poyo ke, nak cakap macam Dr. Amalina ke. You know, you can't blame like people like Dr. Amalina, like she speaks with, British accent, okay, because she has been living in in the UK for quite some time. Of course, she will, she can dapat, she would, you know, get that accent, you know, yeah, accent. Kalau kita pun, kalau kita duduk lama kat kat Kelantan, contohnya kat negeri pantai timur, mesti kita dapat dialect tu betul tak? We will speak like them, just to be. It's not just to be like them. We will, like you know, not unintentionally, we will speak like them. Hmm. Okay, All right. So speak with confidence and don't overthink. Jangan duk fikir macam oh susah, susah, susah. Don't put a mental barrier there. No, it is not that difficult. You just need to break it and come out and practice and do your best. Okay, it is not something that is so terrible and so horrible okay so take this time for you to trial and error when you practice you are actually trial and error cuba jaya oh okay macam ni salah macam tu salah tak okay uh, kalau salah i will ask my teacher i will refer to this person i will talk to this person i will ask this i will ask that okay try not to direct translate yes it will make everything sounds weird of course kalau if you nak nak apa terjemahkan daripada BM ke English is like it's weird it's weird okay pelik ya kan sound pelik okay so during your speaking uh, test use these magic phrases sorry excuse me please and thank you okay let me very quickly asking for clarification the last part that asking for clarification kalau katalah kita tak faham pun um, kita nak cikgu tu uh explain to us what it means um uh, sorry could you repeat that okay so it is down here okay page 155 uh excuse me teacher i do not understand sorry teacher can you please repeat that okay use that if let's say kalau kita tak dengar we kind of miss out something you don't say ha ha no ha ha okay no that is you can do it outside but not during your test no ha Okay, instead say, sorry, excuse me, please, thank you. Bila masuk dalam bilik, greet the teacher. Say, good morning, assalamualaikum. When you are done, dah habis, thank you teacher. Bangun, keluar dengan tertib. Jaga, ada. Alright, so I wish you guys all the best and hope to see you around. Take really good care of yourself. If there's any questions. All right, any question from uh, from anyone? Uh, if you have question from YouTube, I will be reading that for Madam uh, Madam Sheila. Okay, if you have a question for uh, those in in Zoom, if you have a question, you can just unmute yourself and ask question. Okay, I guess we don't have much question for today. Hopefully, everyone actually uh, understand. Okay, all right. So, I think we have come to the end of our workshop for today. Uh, again, thank you very much, Madam Sheila, for, you know, for coming you so with us. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, just to share, lah, you know, I remember masa I, masa I, masa I, when I was younger, I'm still young, eh? <laughs> when I was younger, um, I remember when I was in school, you know, like I, I come, you, you all kena faham, eh? kita orang semua ni bukannya datang pada bandar besar, cikgu BI, you bukannya semua yang duduk dekat KL, I tak duduk dekat KL, I come from a very small town of Bentong, Pahang, okay, technically, uh, the most we had was like KFC, and then you tahu lah KFC ke bandar, ke bandar, bandar kecil memang ada lah, okay, and then um, there was nothing much there, tapi how I train myself to speak English, I listen to uh, English radio station, that's number one. 
uh, at that time when I was younger, hit baru je, hit FM baru keluar, baru started, and then I've been listening to them for many years now. And then I always, you know, like sometimes I'm a chorang gila juga lah, macam macam sila cakap je, cakap sorang sorang macam chorang gila. I did that actually. I I stand in front of the mirror and I practice. I practice to introduce myself. I practice, you know, I give a topic to myself. I think about it and I was standing in front of the 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 camera and I look at myself and practice as seem like the that myself in the mirror that is actually my audience. You know, like I explain, I talk to them, and like macam macam sila cakap lah. It doesn't matter lah kalau you ada grammatical error ke apa ke because yeah. you have to remember when we practice we get to it you know like kita akan perbaiki kita punya uh, error okay uh, so that is uh, tips for me okay <laughs> alright so thank you very much again thank you very much Madam Sheila and thank you very much everyone who joined us today uh, either in YouTube or in Zoom okay we help uh, we hope that you know the sessions are is beneficial for everyone. And on behalf of the Kulia, I wish uh, everyone good luck, all the best for your exam, and we hope that you know this uh, this session could be beneficial for everyone. Okay, and we hope that Sheila, we hope to have more sessions like this. Maybe maybe not this Inshallah. year, but maybe uh, next year. Inshallah. Okay, I will be honored to. Yeah, maybe maybe in the future when COVID is all finished, kita boleh datang mua and then I bring you jalan-jalan makan mua. Inshallah. <laughs> I would love okay. to. Yeah, so we can retest the yeah. degree now. <laughs> we can yes. cross state right now. Exactly. So hope that we can do that. You know, like maybe we can invite you students come to uh, to somewhere. Maybe datang ke UAE Pago ke and then ah, to sure, have, sure. you know, UAE Pago. Yes. In mua. Yes. Okay. All right. With that, thank you very much, everyone. So that's the end of our uh, session for today. Our workshop, and uh, I wish you everyone good luck and all the best. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.